21 members of the Eltersley History Society travelled to the World War I battlefields in Belgium and France in May 2015 to honour the men from Eltersley who died fighting for king and country. During the war, to mark the death of each man, a lime tree was planted on Eltersley Village Green, the Row of Honour. These 14 trees, now mature, form a beautiful walkway. A commemorative stone stands at the head of the Row of Honour, making the village green a peaceful place to remember all the brave Eltersley men who fought in World War I. During our visit to the cemeteries and memorials, members of the group, including a descendant of three of the men's families, read a piece about the men and placed a poppy cross against the headstones. This is the story of how we remembered Eltersley's fallen. Everything on a battlefield is to do with command and control. What you are trying to do They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Henry enlisted in the 8th Battalion Suffolk Regiment on the 22nd of March 1916 at the age of 32 probably under new, the newly enforced conscription rules. After training, Henry embarked for the Western Front and during his time there, he would have been involved at the Battle of Ankara Heights, the 1st to the 11th of October, 1916, the Battle of Ankara, the 13th to the 18th of November, 1916, and the action at Miramont, the 17th to the 18th of February, 1916. Capture of Arras, the 10th of March 1917, and the German retreat to the Hindenburg Line on the 14th of March to the 5th of April 1917. It is difficult to say where Henry Watt would have been fighting just before he died, because he died of illness and was not killed in battle. He contracted spotted fever, cerebral spinal meningitis which was contagious bacterial disease caused by overcrowding, cold weather and exertion, particularly preventable uh, amongst new recruits. Henry went to hospital at St Omar, away from the British Battalion, and died there on the 5th of May 1917, after several weeks' illness. He was 33 years old. When the local newspaper reported his death, they said Henry was highly respected in Eltersley. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Sidney George enlisted at St Neots in the 1st Battalion Cambridgeshire Regiment on the 24th of January 1916 on the same day as his friends Frank Risley and Alec Childerley. Sidney George and Frank were born in Eltersley on the same day, and Alec was born three months later. They all lived around the village green. The three friends arrived in France together 
on, in March 1916. The first Cambridgeshires took part in the successful assault on the Schwaben Redoubt in November 1916. However, during this action, Alec was seriously injured and had to be discharged from service. In September 1917, Frank was killed in action, age 22. Sidney George was then the last one remaining in France of the three pals who had enlisted together. On the 21st of March 1918, the battalion received orders that it was to prepare to move in fighting order to Longaven, east of Albert, and to dig itself in there. The battalion was involved in heavy fighting over the following 10 days and Sidney George was killed, one of 204 from his battalion missing in action during that time. Sidney George is listed on the Pozier Memorial, which commemorates the 14,000 UK casualties who have no known grave and who died on the Somme between the 21st of March and the 7th of August 1918. Sidney George was the last Eltersley lad to be killed in the war. He was 23 years old. Sorry? Yes. Is it? The width of a trench is one man in full kit can stand to the side <coughs> and a stretcher team can pass him. Oh, that's tight. If you'll come and bunch up and fill this section of the bay. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. George enlisted on the 5th of January 1915 into the A Battery Royal Fields Artillery. The guns used by the RFA were horse-drawn medium calibre guns and howitzers and each battery had four guns. George was home in Eltersley on leave for a week in April 1916 and after that he was in France, initially in the area of Vimy Ridge, then Boufflers, Flessels and on to Fleshencourt, which the A battery reached on the 12th of August 1916. The battalion's objective over the coming days was to take Switch Trench, a strong German position running through the centre of High Wood and close to the village of Bazantin le petit The men came under heavy fire during the two nights of the 14th and 15th of August and it was on the 15th that George was killed when he was hit by shell splinters. The brigade chaplain wrote to George's father to say that George had been in a dugout which was blown in by a shell and he was wounded in the head. George was taken to the field ambulance, a frontline medical station, but died there two hours later without regaining consciousness. George was 31 years old. He rests in Danzig Alley British Cemetery, which lies on a slight slope overlooking the battlefield where he died. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, 
we will remember them. We will remember them. In January 1907, shortly before his 17th birthday, Harry enlisted for seven years in the 2nd Battalion, the Bedfordshire Regiment, and served with them in Gibraltar, Bermuda and South Africa. By August 1914, he'd re-enlisted, this time in the 1st Battalion, the Bedfordshires, either as a regular soldier or a reservist, and Harry was therefore one of the old contemptibles who went to France as soon as war was declared. The first Bedfordshires landed in France on the 16th of August 1914 and on the 23rd were involved in the Battle of Mons, which was a resounding defeat for the Allies, ending with a long forced retreat back almost to Paris. Harry was wounded. Walter and Arthur Kidman were twin brothers born on the 27th of August 1888. They had seven other brothers and sisters. Arthur enlisted on the third day after war was declared, but Walter still stayed at home, probably helping his mother with the housekeeping. The boy's father died on, in October 1915 after being ill for some time. Arthur was killed in December 1915. When conscription was introduced in January 1916, Walter was given five months exemption to help with his farming job. It appears he was permitted to remain at home during the remainder of 1916. However, on the 17th of January 1917, he enlisted in the 7th Battalion, 3rd Suffolk Regiment. In the middle of November 1917, the 12th Eastern Division were moved to the Cambrai area in readiness for the campaign to take Cambrai. The battle started on the 20th of November. 19 divisions, including the 12th Division and 476 tanks of the Tank Corps, took part in the attack on the 5.5 mile front. The battle lasted until the 7th of December. 19 days later, 48,000 British and 53,000 German soldiers lost their lives in the battle. Walter was killed in the fighting at Pelican Trench near Gyun Lee on Monday the 26th of November. He was 29 years old. Walter has no known grave. He is one of 7,000 men commemorated on the Cambrai Memorial to the Missing. The Seventh Suffolks were almost wiped out in the Battle of Cambrai. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Albert was called up in April 1917 when he was 18. He was initially enlisted in the 3rd Bedfordshires, but was transferred into the Machine Gun Corps in October 1917. It's said that the fittest and best of the men were taken into the Machine Gun Corps, where they needed intelligent men to man the guns. Albert was a private, so he wouldn't have been number one in the six-man team. The man who actually fired the gun, but all the members of the team were trained to fire it and could take over in an emergency. Albert's frontline service was brief. 
He was killed within four months of the end of his training. In the spring of 1918, the Allies were expecting a German offensive against the heavily outnumbered Allied troops. On the 7th of March, the four machine gun companies within the 59th Division were amalgamated. There were 64 heavy Vickers machine guns in the battalion, and their task in the expected German attack was to delay the onslaught, giving the infantry and artillery units time to fall back to new positions. The Vickers crew were told that they were to hold out to the last. Albert was killed on the 21st of March, the first day of the German army's attack. The German offensive began with a massive artillery bombardment over a 50-mile stretch of the front line to the west of Cambrai. One million artillery shells fired over five hours, followed by an attack by German elite stormtroopers advancing through thick fog. The British troops were outnumbered by three to one and some machine gun posts were quickly overrun with others making heroic stands. Albert died in this fierce fighting, aged 19, the youngest of Eltersley's men to die. His older brother had been killed six months previously and the boy's father was also fighting. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. William enlisted in the Huntington Cyclist Battalion in November 1915. This battalion were carrying out home defence duties in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire at the beginning of the war, but in July 1916, following the great loss of life during the first day of the Battle of the Somme, Men from the Hunt cyclists were sent to France and were transferred into other regiments. This may have been when William went to France and was transferred to the 1st Cambridgeshire's, where he joined other Eltersley men, Frank Risley, Sidney George Hayden, Alec Childerley, Harry Lunnis and Sidney Rose. William was in the Lewis gun section of the battalion. The Lewis gun was an early light machine gun which could be carried and fired by a single soldier. William was killed in a gas attack on the night of 29th of October 1917, the only death in the first Cambridgeshire's that night. One of his comrades tried to help him with his respirator, but the sickness caused by the gas prevented William from being able to keep it on. William's younger brother Albert had been called up seven months before William was killed and was still in training in England when William died. Albert was killed in March 1918, six months after his brother. The boy's father also served in the war, how he must have felt on his return to Eltersley after the war when both his sons did not is hard to imagine. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Frank enlisted in the 1st Cambridgeshire's in January 1916, on the same day as his two friends Sidney George Hayden and Alec Childerley. Frank and Sidney George were born on the same day in January 1895, and Alec three months later. The three friends arrived together in France in March 1916. Frank and Alec were both seriously wounded in November 1916 in action to defend the Schwaben Redoubt near Tiepfel. Alec was discharged from the army, but Frank returned to service after his recovery. He was home in Eltersley on leave for ten days in March 1917. At some point after that, he returned to France. On the 26th of September 1917, Frank was engaged in his first action on returning to the front during the Third Battle of Ypres. The battalion were involved in heavy fighting for two days until they were relieved at 3 a.m. on the 28th of September. Frank was one of the casualties. Having been missing since the 26th of September, it was concluded that he had been killed on that day. Frank has no known grave 
and he is commemorated on the Tynecott Memorial, which commemorates almost 35,000 officers and men whose graves are not known. Frank was 22 years old. Frank was killed eight days before and only yards away from where James Payne also lost his life. Both men are commemorated at Tyne Cot. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. James enlisted in the 8th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment in 1914, when he was 31 years old. The 8th Lincolnshires went over to France in September 1915 and were very quickly in action. After long marching, the battalion took part in the Battle of Luz in September and October 1915, which saw the first use of poison gas by the British Army, and they also fought at the Battle of the Somme in July 1916. On the 10th of September 1917, James's battalion was in Westbilitz near Bertham. On the 23rd of September, they had church parade and a game of football. On the 25th, they had a horse show in the afternoon. On the 27th of September, they were moved into the front line in Shrewsbury Forest sector, just south of Ypres, where they were under heavy shelling over the following week. On the 4th of October, the battalion took part in the Battle of Broodsinder. In the confusion of the heavy fighting, James was initially listed as missing, but it was later confirmed that he'd been killed on the 4th of October by a sniper while on his way to a dressing station after being wounded. James has no known grave and is commemorated on the Tynecott Memorial to the Missing, alongside Eltersley man Frank Risley, who had been killed eight days earlier and only yards away from where James died. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Arthur and his twin brother Ernest Walter, known as Walter, was born in Eltersley on the 27th of August 1888. Arthur signed up three days after war was declared on the 7th of August 1914 and enlisted in the 8th Battalion Beds Regiment at the end of September 1914. The men came down from Bedford and went to Shoreham on the South Downs where they spent nearly a year training, leaving for France on the 30th of August 1915. They were part of Kitchener's 24th Division. They landed at Boulogne and were billeted at Oystenhover Camp. They then marched 50 miles and were involved in the Second Battle of Luz on the 25th of September 1915. The battalion was then moved from the 24th Division to the 6th Division. On the 15th of December 1915, the men were moved to the forward cottage trench near Wilgeet, just north of Ypres. The weather was cold and frosty and the trenches were very wet, being, being heavily shelled. On the 19th of December 1915, at 5.30 in the morning, the Germans attacked with gas clouds of phosgene gas mixed with chlorine gas, which came across the fields from the German lines and engulfed the trenches where Arthur was. Of the 25,000 troops in the area affected by the gas, 1,069 were hospitalised and 120 were killed. Phosgene attacks, the, that attacks by damage in the lungs and produces pulmonary edema, waterlogging of the lungs. Arthur died of gas poisoning. He was only 27 years old. Arthur is one of 54,846 men who had no known graves on, are listed on the Millennium Gate. In Ypres, to this day, at 8 o'clock in the evening, the Millennium Gate is closed to traffic, crowds gather and buglers from the fire service play the last post in memory of the fallen. They shall grow not old, 
as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. The Cranfield family lived in Potten End. Harry was born on the 15th of May, 1879, the middle child of seven. He later moved to live in Toronto, Canada, where he enlisted in the Canadian Infantry in March 1916. Harry's battalion left Canada on the 25th of October 1916, sailing on the SS Mauritania, landing in Liverpool on the 31st of October and crossing to France on the 29th of November. In April 1917, the four divisions of the Canadian Expeditionary Force combined together to attack the Vimy Ridge. The attack began on Easter Monday, 9th of April, in conditions of sleet and snow. The Vimy Ridge was captured, however, at a cost to the Canadian forces of 3,598 killed and 7,004 wounded. In October 1917, the Canadian Corps was in the centre of the front line of attack in the Third Battle of Ypres between the British on the left and the Anzacs on the right in the assault on Passchendaele. On the 20th of October, D Company, which Harry was in, went up to the front line and at midnight on the 25th they assembled for attack. At 5.40am on the 26th, the British artillery barrage commenced, followed by the first assaulting waves of the 58th Battalion, which succeeded in taking possession of the three enemy pillboxes while under heavy machine fire from the enemy. Harry was killed in this fierce fighting on the 26th of October 1917. He was 38 years old. He is one of those with no known grave and is commemorated on the Menham Gate. Harry's CO wrote to his mother that he was a good soldier and a great favourite with the men. He will be greatly missed by his comrades in the battalion. In addition to the 11 elderly men whose graves or memorials we visited during our trip to the battlefields, there were three more elderly men who died during the First World War, Harry Hayden, Martin Risley and Herbert Topham. Harry Hayden died in hospital in Boulogne on the 21st of August 1916, aged 20. Harry was injured in battle near Mamet's Wood and was taken to Boulogne for an operation. He is buried in Boulogne Eastern Cemetery. Martin Risley, who had emigrated to Canada and enlisted there in the Canadian Infantry, was killed in an accident on the railway after visiting his family in Eltersley whilst his battalion awaited embarkation to the battlefields. Martin was 38 when he died on the 30th of July 1916. He rests in Eltersley Churchyard. Herbert Topham, the oldest son of an Eltersley farmer, had been in the Bedfordshire Yeomanry since the spring of 1910. As a serving member of the Territorial Force, he was immediately available for service when war was declared. Herbert was at camp in the Chelmsford area in December 1915 when he was taken ill with rheumatic fever. He was transferred to hospital in Southend-on-Sea where he died on January 7, 1916, aged 34. Herbert is also buried in Eltersley Churchyard. <laughs>
they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.